Hello everyone. Welcome back to Science Talk show. Here you will meet the research enthusiasts who will share their experience in the different sector and motivate you to be extraordinary in the field of science. Today we have with us neuroscientist Dr. Richard Richard L. Jairaj who is listed in 2% scientists globally by Stanford University and elsewhere research intelligence report 2021. So let's welcome Dr. Jairaj to our very own show, Science Talk Show. Hello, Dr. Jairaj. Welcome to the show. Yes, so Ovin, I am absolutely thrilled to be in this show. And I congratulate you and your team for your wonderful work. And I wish you, your team, and all the viewers a very happy, successful, and blessed New Year. Thank you, and very happy New Year to you. To begin with, first, uh, first of all, I would like to ask, as I know that. you are from india originally and you had done your phd in tamil nadu and right now you are working as a medical research specialist in uae so how was your journey would you like to share some glimpse of it yeah of course uh, so i would like to start with a quote so your decisions will shape your destiny right for example uh, so the decision that you take each and every day will have an impact in your destiny so let's take for example if if you are able to if you are in a situation to either watch a movie or do something towards your goal so which one do you choose okay so it, your decisions that you make there will have a larger impact on the timeline for you to reach your destiny so yeah quotes apart uh, uh, so i i have to complete after completing my masters in biotechnology like every other student i went to bangalore because that's a biotech hub and they apply to different jobs um, 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 in different biotech industries that are spread all over in bangalore and uh, so uh, i've been distributing my resume i didn't uh, apply i've been distributing my resume to the gatekeepers and still i doubt whether uh, that it reached the hiring managers so uh, so uh, you are a result of what you are what you do and their results right so obviously since i didn't have a specific uh, job description in my mind or a specific company in my mind uh, all my job hunt ended in vain right and uh, so that's when i had an opportunity to do my phd and i thought okay that would be better and i started to get more information about registration of my phd and so on but still i didn't have a research question in my mind you know uh so that's when my mentor dr n ilangoval from periyar university opened the doors for neuroscience research so your mind is like a parachute it only works when you open your mind and it will save you when you are when, only when you are open to receiving new ideas and information so uh so my mentor so he talked to me more about uh, neuroscience research and he gave me a lot of articles to learn and after learning a lot of articles i really became passionate to do more research on understanding the mechanisms of neurodegenerative diseases and to develop drugs for parkinson's disease right uh, and and uh, the next question is since it's a new lab i didn't have any facilities in the lab uh, so i had to reach to different people uh, ranging from dr dave stubert uh, from sal institute of biological sciences in california to cdri in lucknow aims in delhi and you know what uh, everyone was willing to help they opened the doors so i collaborated with different people and uh, i completed my phd in 3 uh, to 4 years with uh, four first order publications and the other thing is i also got a senior research fellowship at university of washington in seattle in dr zhang's lab so obviously you are moving from so until my phd I was doing everything in india right so after, when you move to us the environment is different uh the people are really competitive so i was not performing well um uh in terms of uh, getting the results and consistently performing uh, the research right but again um uh, the perception uh, you have on your ups and downs plays a major role uh in developing you further right so i took those challenges as opportunities and i learned a lot and then later uh, i was married to my beloved wife Jennifer and we moved to Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. And uh, the research that I performed there was to understand the pathophysiology of Gulf War illness. Uh, 
um, um, uh, so it was more about the effect of environmental toxicants like chlorofiricose on neuroinflammation and the resultant neurodegeneration. So that's what my goal was, you know. And uh, so I learned a lot. And um, later, due to some political disturbance in the US, uh, our funding uh, was cut, you know, it was halted. Uh, our projects were funded by NIEHS and it was stopped. So one good character that I have is I always press myself, even in difficult situations, right? So I was applying for different jobs. And that's when, when Dr. Fakria Yusuf Jalal, uh, and she's no more, may God bless her, uh, she invited me to take up a postdoctoral scientist job in her lab. And uh, I was working on identifying and developing drugs for Parkinson's disease. And right now, I am spearheading many different projects as a medical research specialist in pediatrics department. So this is actually 10 years of my experience. I try to put it in like five minutes. I get it. <laughs> Okay, no problem. But while you were talking, you were talking about some ups and downs. And I'm damn sure that while you was applying in US, you must be having some ups and downs. So what were those? And do you think with the digitalization, it have changed, the scenario have changed? And how it have changed? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So, so yeah, I mean, every successful professional and even unsuccessful professional, they, uh, not even professional, everyone has ups and downs in their life, right? So uh, it's how you see it, uh, right? Uh, so uh, for example, if you take my situation, uh, uh, the ups and downs I had is I didn't have enough facilities in my lab to start with, right? So uh, I reached out to people. So either you can see ups and downs as a problem or you can see ups and downs to find a solution. If yeah. you don't have problems, you can't grow in life, right? Yeah, so, right. so what it was, so I reached out to different people and they helped me and I, I just completed my research goal. And the second thing I would say that uh, being in India, so I was not, uh, I was not uh, an expert in advanced technologies, you know, okay. but uh, so how I did that is I uh, reached out to different labs and I got a position in advanced labs where they do sophisticated experiments and I, uh, I, I become an expert in those and that is very much useful in both academia and industry as well, right? Uh, so there are ups and downs, but it's how you see it. So answering your question regarding digitalization, yeah, of course, dig digitalization um, uh, made the world smaller, brought people more closer, and you always have uh, um, uh, answers to your questions and solutions to your problems in your fingertips, right? Mm -hmm. So digitalization plays a major role in advancing the field in a shorter period of time, you know? Okay. That's nice. Well, oh, I saw that you have a big exposure of uh, studying in India studying in USA, working in USA, and right now working into UAE. So how do you see that the difference between the education system opportunities between the India and abroad? Well, uh, if you ask about, uh, uh, so um, I just wanted to ask, for example, if someone wants to do a PhD, my first question is, why do they want to do the PhD, right? Uh, what's the purpose behind that? Is it yes. just a degree was behind the name or are they really passionate about? So nevertheless, um, uh, we have very good institutes in India that are really mm -hmm. competitive institutes that are present globally. However, there are few advantages when you do PhD or postdoc or when you work abroad, which are as follows. The first thing is international exposure, right? Uh, so if you take in my case, when I did my first postdoc at University of Washington, we had people from Europe, we had people from, for example, Romania, Italy, China, and uh, uh, US as well. So you will be able to work with people from diverse culture and background. And down the lane in 10 years, uh, so these people will be, will be in a good position at different places globally. So obviously you'll have more contacts and networking globally. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is the funding opportunities. Uh, if I'm not wrong, 
when I was doing a PhD, a junior research fellowship uh, uh, received almost 8,000 rupees and a senior research fellowship almost received 13,000 rupees. Whereas okay. a PhD fellowship in US, again, it depends on the PI, it ranges anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 dollars. So you'll get more fellowship. And the third thing that I would like to uh, emphasize is the opportunities that you get, right? Uh, you'll be able to attend more conference, you'll be able to talk with more people who are professional in industries, you know, and that plays a major role. However, it's again up to you. And again, uh, I could see I've been talking to a lot of PhDs in India or master's people in India, and they have this disbelief whether they'll be able to do PhD in Europe, US or anything else. Always emphasize that they have to believe in yourself. Don't complicate things too much, right? Yeah. Just take one step at a time and then you reach the destiny. So this is what I would like to tell you. Definitely. Since you like you told about a lot of importance and even the benefits of doing a PhD or the higher studies outside in the abroad, maybe the USA or any other country. I would like to ask one thing, when the people or the students specifically, when they decide, okay, I want to go you know, and do PhD or my higher studies outside India. So what are the basic points or the essential points they have to keep into mind while applying or searching the PR? What are those? Yeah, so that's again a wonderful question for me. So before going into how to approach a PI, uh, they should develop the right mindset. So you should have a right goal. You shouldn't have any fuzzy goals, right? You should believe in yourself and you should be faithful to yourself and you should be willing to work hard, okay? And don't doubt yourself. Doubt is the number one killer. It kills more people than COVID and tsunami. So don't doubt yourself. So if you have okay, all these three, yeah, I mean, if you have all these three mindsets, so you'll be confident enough to talk to people, right? Uh, for example, I've seen a lot of people just copy and pasting their emails to different jobs. Never do that. Always tailor your covering letter based on each and every job description. And always you should use the opportunities to exchange and discuss ideas. For example, if an aspiring student wants to do PhD abroad, uh, he, should, uh, he should be able to tell the PI or the people who is going to hire how his expertise can benefit their lab. And believe me, uh, really uh, researchers uh, everywhere are, are very busy. So if they don't uh, find the first two lines of an email attractive, they won't go through it, right? So yeah. that, is, that is the reason why YouTube uh, advertisements of five seconds, because if they don't catch your attention in five seconds, no matter how long your advertisement is, you're not going to see it. So the yeah. first two lines of email is really important. And always try to bring up new ideas and uh, tailor your CV. Uh, and always, uh, you have to tell the PI, okay, this is my expertise, and this is how I can help you, and this is the ideas that I have. So they'll be really willing to take you. Okay. Yeah, so this is what I would like to tell who are aspiring to do a PhDs. Obviously, it's an important advice and the first thing of PhD or finding higher education is finding PR. So if you are, you have achieved that, then you are like, you have achieved everything like in your dream of studying abroad. Okay. Absolutely. So, yes. So another thing what I want to ask is like uh, about your achievement, about this to being listed as a 2% scientist globally by Stanford University. So how a one person can get listed into this, what the qualification or what higher uh, educations it is required, uh, what kind of number of papers or what are the things which really matters to get into this uh, achievement? Yeah, that's a, that's a wise question actually. Um, so yeah, I'm blessed to be in the top 2% of scientists and uh, uh, it struck me by surprise. Uh, however, so uh, I took it as a motivation to do more. Uh, for example, Usain Bolt or Mike Phelps, uh, they won in a competition and when they are part participating again next year, so people will be looking up to, the, up to them, right? Whether they are again winning this time. Uh, so, so I just take it as a motivation and this, uh, this list was prepared based upon the number of publications you have, 
the collaborations you had with people all over the world, and the number of citations that you have for each of your publications, okay. and so on. And I'm also a people, I am very much interested in exposing myself to new ideas and collaborating with people. You know, you never know where you get your ideas from. You know, you right. get the idea while right to people and so on. So be exposed to new ideas. And I would like to put it this way for any individual to excel. I would like to compare the, the, the qualifications to the mechanics of a car. Um, so, uh, for example, fuel in your car is the positivity that you need, okay? And then the steering of the car yeah. is the mentorship that you need. And then, I don't know if you know about the piston in the engine, it's the hard work. So more yeah. the hard work, more the success. And then yes. the accelerator, the consistency. So only if everything works together, you'll be able to reach the destination on time and sometimes early than that. Okay. Yeah. Lastly, I want to ask, there are many people who are discussing about, okay, study abroad, study higher or like in USA, but very few people are talking about how to get the jobs there. You was into USA and you got hired as a medical specialist in UAE. So what was your experience and what, what one person has to do if they want to work as a medical specialist or any, in any other jobs in UAE or USA? Yeah, so that's again a beautiful question. So, uh, um, so it's again how passionate you are. So, I mean, there are people who just take whatever job comes on on their vision, or there are some people who are really interested in a specific job in a specific place, right? Uh, so, you should have a long term goal. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, if uh, for example, if one guy wants to move into a pharmaceutical industry. For example, Denali Therapeutics in the US. Uh, so he should uh, closely follow the industry trend and he should compare how far he is qualified to get that position in that industry. And the second thing is he should start networking with people who are already there, you know, because whatever you see in the internet, of course, it's like 80% true. And, uh, but what happens really is something different. So if you have someone who is already working in the same position that you're willing to go, and they will give a lot of information regarding that. Um, uh, so uh, for example, if you take me, uh, so I am a medical research specialist and uh, I am working on different projects, but all those projects that I'm working, I'm passionate about it. So it's, it's not like someone is pushing you to do it, it's how interested you are in doing it. And uh, you should have long-term goal, as I said earlier, because if people from India wants to go to US, nowadays we have this visa issues, right? So the industry mm -hmm. won't be willing to sponsor visa. So it's always better uh, to uh, uh, move in as a student because it's easy to get a student visa and then get a work visa in US or Europe because the companies have, have networking with different people. I have people in different companies and they say that it's easy for them to hire a person who's already inside the country rather than people outside the country. So I'll be uh, willing to talk more like if the viewers would like to connect with me on LinkedIn and if they have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them based on the experience I have. Thank you so much for your advice and you have given a wonderful information, in fact, informative ones and a lot of students can actually take this advice and they can fulfill their dream to be, go to abroad or work abroad. So thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure, Swabin. I'm looking forward to hearing more from you and you are doing an amazing job again and congratulations for your team.